Hello, this is Jamie Romero with Backy Howell, and today we're going to continue our discussion of loops and talk about while loops and do loops. Well, in the previous video, we had a program that used a for loop to loop through the command line arguments, printing out one per line. At the end of the loop, it printed out the word done. Well, if you recall from that previous video, the syntax for the for loop was to have a set of parentheses and in those parentheses have an initial expression. That's typically where you uh, declare a counter variable and initialize it. A Boolean expression or a test expression. This is where we uh, test to see if a particular condition is true. And if it is, we run the statements in the loop. If it isn't, we do not run the statements in the loop. And then an increment, which after the loop completes, that statement would execute to typically add or perhaps decrement, uh, subtract, from the counter variable. And so that was what a for loop looked like. Today we're going to be looking at a while loop <coughs> as well as a do loop. Let's start with a while loop. A while loop is a little bit simpler than a for loop in that a while loop iterates while an expression is true. And you specify that expression inside the parentheses of the while loop. So as long as that Boolean expression yields true, we'll go ahead and run whatever statement or statements are inside of the loop body. Well, let's take this rough syntax and let's take it over to our program. And uh, actually first, let me comment out the lines of code for the for loop. And in Java, one way to do comments is to put in a double slash and that comments from that point to the end of the line. I guess I could have, and maybe it would have been a little less typing, I could have used a slash star and then finish it with a star slash comment. That says comment everything out in between those two symbols. Okay, well, we're going to do the while loop. So let me paste this uh, code in, maybe make it look okay. And in our case, I'll go ahead and just do similar code as what we uh, did with our for loop in that I want to loop and print out the command line arguments one per line. So suppose the first thing I need to do is have some sort of counter variable that we're going to be using to increment, to step through each element in the array. And instead of calling it i, I'll just call it counter, maybe to be a little more descriptive. The Boolean expression, this is going to be similar to what we did inside of the for loop. We want to check to see that our counter is less than args.length. We don't want it to be printing out anything uh, or attempt to print out anything beyond the size of the array. And then the statement, again, we'll simply just do a printout here. We'll print out arg sub, in this case counter. We'll print out the, the element at the, in the array uh, based upon where our counter is currently at. So arg0, arg1, arg2, etc. So while loop, we check this expression, if it is true, then any statements inside the curly braces would be executed. If this is false, then we would not execute any statements inside the while loops curly braces. Okay, so save that. Let's go out to a command prompt, run the Java C command to compile echo.java, and then uh, run echo, Java space echo. And, oh yeah, uh, looks like we are uh, running the program but not passing any arguments in. And so counter is zero and args.length is zero. Therefore, this expression is false. Zero is not less than zero. And so it didn't try to print anything out. And you know, actually, that's a, that's a good behavior because if we tried to print out args sub zero and uh, the, the element or the array was empty, we'd actually get an exception here. We can't print out any elements in the array that don't exist. Uh, let's try this out with some arguments. One, two, three. Oh, I did something wrong. What have I done wrong? What's going on here? Notice it's actually an infinite loop. It's just printing one, 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 one. I'll hit Control C. That'll kill that uh, that run. Let's go take a look at the code. What am I missing? Uh, you might have seen it. If you haven't seen it yet, maybe pause the video and think about what's missing. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and show you what I should have done. Just like in a for loop, you need to have a way to increment the counter variable. You need to add one each time through the loop. Otherwise, this counter variable would always be zero and it would always be less than args length. Now, we need to 
to step through that one, one uh, number at a time. And so now with that little change, let's go over here. I'll clear the screen. I'll rerun my compiler. And now I should have better luck echoing 1, 2, and 3. So that's what a while loop looks like. Let's go with a do loop next. A do loop is similar to a while loop, but the difference is that it's guaranteed to execute at least once. So a do loop is guaranteed to execute at least once. Notice the syntax. We have the word do. We have our curly braces and uh, whatever statements are associated with that loop. And we move the word while and its corresponding Boolean expression to the end. This is a very good indicator that this code is going to run before it even checks to see if the uh, Boolean or test expression is true. And then this is one thing that uh, a lot of people leave off. There's a semicolon at the end of that loop, at the end of the, after the while here. So do loop, we know that it's going to run at least one time. If I go into echo.java and I modify this code, or, or you know what, let's go ahead and copy this, control C. I'll put in the comments so that this is still here in case we for some reason want to get back to it. And then we'll paste in our code here. Let me move the while statement, control X, down to the bottom, add a semicolon at the end, and put the word do at the top. So now I have myself a do loop. It's so one of the nice things about doing this in a video form. If you want to see that again, just kind of rewind a little bit and watch how we converted the while loop back to, out to a do loop. Well, uh, the do loop is guaranteed to execute at least once, so it's going to print out arg sub counter, arg sub zero, every time, regardless of whether there's an arg zero there or not. And then the, uh, the check to see if counter is less than args dot length will occur after the first iteration of the loop. So uh, let me save this away. Let's go ahead and again recompile, since we've made a change to the code. I'll run it with 1, 2, and 3, and you're going to see that the code doesn't really work any differently than it did with the while loop or even the for loop. It still echoes 1, 2, and 3. But if we really wanted to see the difference, we can run this program without any arguments. Recall with the while loop when we did this, it just didn't run the loop. The do loop, it is going to run the, the loop body at least once. And uh, this is that scenario I was mentioning earlier. It's trying to access element zero in the command line arguments, and that doesn't exist. We didn't pass in any arguments, and so the array is empty. There is no element zero. There's, not, there's no first element. And so we get an array index out of bounds exception. Unlike other languages, Java doesn't allow you to access past the edge of the array. You can't access uh, chunks of memory that haven't been allocated. Okay, but that does prove that the do loop works. So there we go. We have ourselves the for loop, the while loop, and the do loop. And that's the, the basic syntax of each one. I probably should mention, uh, just, just for completeness, that with any of these loops, you're not required to put in the, the curly braces. If you just have the one statement associated with them, just like with if statements, it'll work. But, you know, I highly recommend that you drop those curly braces in uh, because, among other things, you're probably going to have multiple statements. And beyond that, it's just easier for people to read if they can clearly distinguish where the loop begins and where the loop ends. Well, that concludes, concludes our video. And uh, thank you very much for watching.